Brilliant. So uh, for anyone that doesn't know me, I'm Christine Kolodziejski. I am based in the UK. I work for a big four company as a senior manager leading the Power Platform team in UK and I. I am a front end developer and a massive UI nerd. So you may have seen me on LinkedIn or Twitter or YouTube spamming everyone's feeds with things that nobody needs really in the Power Apps, but everyone seems to want to use. <laughs> I am also Microsoft MVP for business applications, uh, which I'm very proud to be. I am a, a certified Princess S. This is a title I got from Louise Fries. Uh, so I take that with pride and outside of work, outside of my laptop, which I do sometimes walk away from, believe it or not. I also do racing, so I'm taking part in multiple national championships this year. I love playing games. I love playing drums uh, and I'm just a massive nerd, really. That's about it. So if you want to connect with me, that QR code on the right hand side is to all of my social media. So if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter, feel free to do so. And without any further ado, that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> I am kidding. So I am going to now present my actual hands-on demo. I really am keen to show you hands-on how to style your Power Apps, uh, your Copilot. Uh, sorry, I'm used to saying Power Apps all the time. How to style your Copilot and really improve that end user experience. So I'm just going to pop that on the screen now and hopefully everyone can see it now. Yep, if so, perfect. Yep. Thank you so much. So in terms of the use case for today for my copilot, I decided to use all of the AI features. Um, decided to use the Microsoft investment into OpenAI and not actually use any of that and just put a simple topic. So in terms of my copilot, all it can do is just answer a very simple question. So I'm just going to say hi. And in a second, it will throw me some options around what I want to learn. I am just going to click on one of these and it will just propose to me a video in a second when the internet finally decides to load this. So this is the typical chat of a co-pilot that you will see. And I will show you how you can take it from this to looking much better when you want to post it on your uh, custom website, as an example. Now, before we navigate, just to preempt this, this session and the presentation itself is going to be focusing mostly on co-pilots that you'll be using and posting, publishing on your custom websites, a web app or PowerPages site. So this right now is not supported for co-pilot controls in Canvas apps or any other controls, but hopefully with time we will see the product engineering teams add some additional styling features. Now, before we actually go into the demo, let me just quickly show you some of the steps that you need to take in order to be able to do this first. So first of all, uh, I will navigate to Microsoft Docs. As we all know, Microsoft love to document everything step by step. So if you get lost at any point today, I will one, have my own blog post written up with all of the instructions. And two, you also have the use of Microsoft Docs that updated very regularly to find out how to do those things. So this is the page that we are looking at. And this page outlines how you can style your custom uh, chatbot co-pilot uh, that you want to publish on the website. So there's quite a few steps that you need to take and I'm going to quickly streamline it and show you the quickest way on how to do that. Now the first step that you need to take uh, is go to the uh, section number two where you have all of the HTML code. So the reason why we can't use this right now in Canvas apps or anywhere else is because we have to use some HTML and CSS. That's why I'm called the princess. And we have to edit it, add some uh, styling options, and then we can then post it on our website. So what we have to do first is we have to copy this code snippet from here and we have to pop this into our IDE. So whether using Visual Studio code or an online IDE, it really doesn't matter. For the demo today, I am going to use what's called code pen IO. So if you've ever been to any of my sessions or watched any of my YouTube videos, you will be very familiar with this. CodePen IO is pretty much an online ID. The biggest benefit of it is that it allows you to render everything real time on the right hand side. So while you're editing CSS, I can see all of the changes I'm making. So I'm just going to post this uh, HTML code in here and I'm just going to remove the first line because we don't need to define the doc type. And as you can see, by default, we now have this rendered in here. Now, to add our copilot to this, we have to collect what's called the bot token ID or bot token URL. Now, it sounds very technical. I will show you 
quickly how you can do this. So as we scroll down through here, as you can see, Microsoft have added lots of comments. So if you're ever confused about any of the codes that you have in here, you can easily read the comments or you can use Copilot to help you understand what the code says. Uh, so we have to scroll a little bit further to the bottom. And if we just quickly go into here, as you can see, we are asked for the Copilot token endpoint. And this is the URL that we're going to copy and paste in here. So I'm going to navigate to my Copilot Studio. And to get the endpoint uh, URL, all we have to do is navigate to settings, then navigate to channels. And in here, we have to choose either mobile app or Facebook or Skype, as that will have the nice link available for us there to copy. So I'll just click on mobile app. And as you can see, the token endpoint is already here. So all I have to do, click on copy. And now I have that in my clipboard. And now I can navigate back to my pen in here and paste that in here. Now you have to make sure that this uh, URL that we post a uh, paste in here now is between either single quotes or double quotes, otherwise you are going to get an error. So I'm just going to pop that in here. And within one or two seconds, we should have the uh, Copilot render on the right hand side. If we just quickly give it one second to um, load. If the demo gods allow, uh, just to kind of um, be on the safe side, I'm just going to refresh the website because, of course, the demo gods decides that that's not going to work today, even though it worked 10 minutes ago. So I will just quickly refresh the website. We do have a backup just in case, so we don't have to worry about that. I will just give it one moment to load. Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> OK, uh, so I'll just quickly pop all of that in here and hopefully we will have the uh, chatbot load on the right hand side now. There we go. So as you can see, that chatbot is now loading. Now with the code itself, by default, uh, Microsoft have added a couple of lines to for the copilot to actually trigger the conversation. So as you can see, that message now appears in there and I can start the conversation and I can just say hi. And we have all of the options that we could see in the Copilot Studio. So how do we actually style this? First of all, we have to understand how to style and the properties that we can style. And the good news is that we can style pretty much anything out of here just because we're using CSS, which is perfect. Now, to make the job easier, what we can actually do to style it is we can use what's called the bot chat, uh, sorry, web chat framework, and that's version V4. Now, this web chat framework uh, gives you lots of properties that you can copy and paste and edit and to make it even easy for you i have got found a website that has all of the properties listed so all you have to do is copy and paste them into your chatbot and you'll be able to change the look and feel so let me just quickly show you how to do that so this is the website it's called uh, bisa.io all of the links will be available afterwards anyway, so don't worry. You don't have to write that down right now. And like I said, I will have a full blog write up as well. I just need to finish that off. So all we have to do from here is, as you can see, we have all of these properties available to us. We have to copy them, paste them into our chatbot, and we can see some styling changes and we can start changing some of the things. So to start with something very simple, I will just quickly copy this snippet in here that allows us to change things like the background color of the actual web chat. So I'm going to go back to my pen. And then in here, we have to find the style options. Now, the style options are uh, somewhere a little bit further down. There we go. So this is what you're looking for. Again, all of the comments make it so easy for you to find anyway. And all we have to do now is after here, we just have to put a comma and paste that. And now we are able to start styling a copilot. So if I want to change, let's say, the background of the uh, of the chat, I can just say as an example black and in a second you'll see that the color, uh, the background color of this will change to black and it's really just as simple as that. So I already have a color in my clipboard that I am going to use for this and that is this off kind of very light blue color um, that we're going to use. So um, as you can see, we can change all of these things. I don't really want to focus on them. Now, another thing that I really love doing is when I'm talking to a chatbot, I like to see some kind of avatar icon. And as you can see, when you use this copilot and you post it on the website, as at the moment, there isn't any avatars there. So I'm going to navigate to my uh, BISA website. And if we just quickly scroll down to the bottom, you can see that we have another snippet that allows us to add an avatar both for the end user and for the bot itself. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to navigate back into here. 
And similarly to what I did before, we're just going to add a comma and I will pop that in here. So now we've done that, I have to actually find an image that I want to use as my profile picture. So I already have two headshots that I'm going to use from a website called unsplash.com. Unsplash allows you to use all of the images that they have on their stock free for uh, license free. So you can use them for free in all of your projects with no licensing implications at all. So I'm just going to use this headshot here and I'm going to copy the image address navigate back to my copilot and let's just say we will add this as an avatar for the copilot itself so that will be the uh, bot avatar image and i will just pop that in here and in a second we should hopefully see that image render in here as you can see we have that there i will do the same for the ngs as well so i'll just copy this headshot in here and go into here use it to use the avatar image and in one second when that re-renders, I'll be able to say hi. And as you can see, we now have those two headshots in here. And this applies to everything. So I can change the way these options look as an example. I can navigate back to my website and I can, let's say, go to my uh, suggested actions, which is what those things are called. And for suggestion actions, there are multiple styling options, as you can see, that we can actually change. So I'm just going to pop that in here. Now, I did notice that there is one action that's actually property that's missing here, and it's actually one of my favorite properties. And that is to do with the options. Let me just quickly go into here. As you can see right now, those options are in a kind of carousel manner. Now, this is all great, but if you have multiple options, those other options will be kind of hidden behind the scroll bar and you have to scroll uh, to, to find them. You can easily actually have them stacked on top of each other, which not many people know. So this property is called suggested action layout and we will just ignore that the font and formatting that I have in here right now. And all we have to do is just put stacked and what you will see in a second is that those options will not now actually be stacked. So if I just quickly go for hi. Just like that, we have those actions stacked. This is fully responsive as well. So you can see that as I make this bigger, make this smaller, this will extend as much as we want. Now, just mindful of the time because we're running out of time very shortly and we have some amazing presentations. Um, I will just quickly change a couple more properties and I will show you what you can actually do within around 20 minutes of editing some of these properties to really take your copilot from looking like this to looking slightly better. So if we just quickly navigate back into here, there are multiple things that we can actually do with the uh, suggested actions. So we can do simple things like the border width, border radius, so I can easily just change that to let's say 15. It will make it more rounder. I can change the image height. So if I wanted to add some more padding and, and have a, a slightly larger box, I certainly can. So this is pretty much what you can do. Uh, like I said, there's uh, hundreds and hundreds of properties that you can actually style. So I really don't want to bore you with these and I'm sure you'll want to play around with them. So let me just quickly show you what you can actually achieve within around 15, 20 minutes of work if you really uh, want to change your copilot. So like I said, this is the kind of copilot that we get out of the box again. It doesn't look bad, but if you want some extra extra, you certainly can. And I'm just going to navigate to my demo. And as you can see, this took around 15 minutes of time, like I said. What I can do is I can just say hi. And as you can see, my copilot will message me to say, uh, how can I help you today? For some reason, the image on the left hand side hasn't rendered, which is not great for a demo, but we roll with that. And I will just go for front end. Um, I have no idea why that's not actually allowing me to do that. There we go. Uh, so as you can see, we also have some hover effects in here as well. And you can do things like animations. You can do pretty much anything. So I didn't want to blow your mind too much with animations because I know it's quite complicated. So maybe that will be a presentation for the next time. And I will also hopefully be hosting an all day workshop on how to do this from scratch uh, from building your custom chatbot to publishing on your power pages site um, as well so if you do want to be informed of that and keep, keep updated make sure you follow me on linkedin but without any further ado we've run out of time so i hope you enjoyed that demo and if you have any questions let me know and i will hand over to david for our next amazing presenter mm -hmm.